My brothers and sisters, fake news has been defined as news, stories, or hoaxes created to deliberately misform, misinform, or deceive. Fake news, stories, or hoaxes are created to either influence people's views, push a political agenda, or simply just to cause division and confusion. Fake news is often of a sensational nature created to be widely shared or distributed for the purpose of generating revenue or discrediting a public figure, a political movement, a company, etc. Fake news is written and published usually with the intent to mislead in order to damage an agency, an entity, or even a person. Our president, New Providence and Friends, and our commander-in-chief, Donald Trump, popularized this catchphrase after the 2016 presidential election. Fred, we have heard over his presidency numerous times out of his own mouth this catchphrase, fake news. This phrase has been used so much that is very difficult to distinguish in the news media yeah, right. the truth yeah. versus a lie. Right. Am I right about it? That's right. That's right. Now, now, come on. You would think that because President Trump so often speaks about fake news, uh-huh. that this is a phrase that he himself invented or came up with. Uh, With all the fake news and lies that he has engendered, real truth is hard to perceive. But let me say right here, that fake news and lies have been around longer than Donald Trump. And we see its presence in our selected text for the day. In the preceding verses of our scriptural text, we discover that the Apostle Paul, Luke, and others have just arrived in Jerusalem. The Christian brothers and sisters of Jerusalem received Paul and his companions in ministry, the Bible says, warmly. The next day, Paul and his ministry companions went to see James, the brother of Jesus, who served as the leader of the Christian community in Jerusalem. And the Bible says that all of the elders were present with James. 
Am I in the book? Paul greeted them and reported to them all all the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And the Bible says that when James and the council of elders heard Paul's report, that they praised God. And deacons, let me say right here, if you are a true believer in Jesus Christ, you ought to be able to celebrate the mighty move of God in someone else's life. You ought to praise God for what he is doing in someone else's life because you may not know but you may be the next in line for a blessing. James and the Jerusalem elders praise God over Paul's report. But after rejoicing over the report given by Paul, James and the elders of Jerusalem revealed to the Apostle Paul that there had been some fake news and lies spread and published about him. They told Paul that many of the Jewish believers in Jerusalem though they were now believers in Christ, were still zealous in regards to keeping the law. Fake news and lies were spread amongst these believers that Paul was teaching Jews who lived amongst non-Jews that they should not keep the ritual act of circumcision and other Jewish customs and that they should turn away from the law of Moses. Brothers and sisters, this was fake news and lies. So James and the elders told Paul, that the way he could prove that he was still obedient to the law as a Jew was that there were four men who had taken a Nazarite vow. And they said to him, if you join them in their rite of purification, and if you also pay for their heads to be shaven, and pay for the sacrifices that they would offer at the end of the vow. Then everyone would know that there is no truth in these reports about you, Paul. Now, now, come on, come on. Let's, let's, let's be real in here. How many of you know that no matter what you do, sometimes people will believe the fake news and lies irregardless to what you might do or might say. There are some people Fred, that won't believe the truth. That's right. Even if the truth came up yes, and smacked them on the head. Yes, <laughs> there are some people locked up in jail right now. That's right. That's right. 
and even some people who are now resting in their graves. All because someone rejected the truth. Are y'all listening to me? Well, Paul agreed to do what James and the elders suggested. And so he took the four men and went to the temple. And the Bible says that when the seven days were nearly over, some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul at the temple. Now, these Jews from the province of Asia had a bone to pick with the Apostle Paul because of the success that he had in their ministry province. And, and let me say right here, everybody is not happy about your success in God. Am I right about it? Sometimes people will hate you and try to harm you because God is doing a new thing in your life. They will especially come against you if you're one of those individuals to try to help to bring people out of their sinful life. Am I right about it? Well, these Jews from the province of Asia seeing Paul in the temple stirred up the whole crowd and seized Paul, shouting, fellow Israelites, help us. Am I in the book? Now, if you know anything about how the Jerusalem temple was designed, there was an outer court and an inner court. In the outer court, Gentiles were permitted to enter and worship. Paul, but in the inner court, only Jews were permitted to enter and worship. Paul, being a Jew and undergoing the rite of purification, was in the inner court where he rightfully belonged. But the Jews from Asia snatched Paul out of the inner court and dragged him out into the outer court and commences to publish fake news and lies on the Apostle Paul. They begin shouting to those who were gathered at the temple that this is the man who teaches everyone, everywhere, look what they said, against our people, our law, and this place speaking about the temple. And besides this, this joker has brought Greeks into the inner court of the temple and defiled this holy place. Now, somebody say fake news. Now, the Bible says that these Jews from Asia previously saw an Egyptian believer named Trophimus yep, yep. with Paul around the city. Uh -huh. And guess what they did? 
They assumed. Tell your neighbor, they assumed that Paul had brought Trophimus into the inner court of the temple where only the Jews were able to go. Somebody say fake news and lies. <laughs> well, the Bible says that the whole city was aroused and that they grabbed Paul and began beating him with the hopes of killing him. And let me say right here that fake news and lies can cause people physical harm and sometimes lead to death. Mm. Now, 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 adjacent to the temple was the fort of Antonia, which served as the barracks for the Roman commander, officers, and soldiers. News got to them that a riot was happening in the temple. So the Roman commander took some officers and soldiers and went to see what was happening. And the Bible says that when the angry mob saw the Romans coming, that they stopped only then Beating Paul. When they got to Paul, the commander told his soldiers to arrest Paul and put him in chains. After arresting him and putting him in chains, then the commander asked the mob who Paul was. And what he had done. <laughs> and the Bible says, some shouted one thing, while others shouted another, so that the commander could not get at the truth. There was so much fake news and lies that the commander could not distinguish the truth. Y'all still with me? So the commander decided to take Paul back to the Roman barracks. But before Paul was carried inside, he spoke to the Roman commander in his native tongue Greek. And the commander was amazed. The commander said, wait a minute now. Do you speak Greek? He said, I thought that you were the Egyptian who started a revolt and led 4,000 terrorists out into the wilderness some years ago. The Apostle Paul responds, in essence, back to the commander by saying, listen here, I am not who you think I am. I know that there is some fake news and lies about me. But if you give me a moment, let me tell you and the crowd the real truth and nothing but the truth. The commander gave Paul permission to speak, 
the truth about himself. And the Bible says Paul began speaking to the crowd in Aramaic, which is the language of the common Jews in the marketplace. And Paul says, I want to tell you the truth and get rid of the fake news and the lies about me. He said, first of all, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Sicilia. But not only was I born there, here in Jerusalem, I was brought up. He said, let me tell you the truth. I studied under Gamaliel and was thoroughly trained in the law of our ancestors. I was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. I didn't tell you the truth about myself. He said, I persecuted the followers of this way to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. And guess what? I have proof that this is the truth for the high priest and his council can testify themselves of this truth. Matter of fact, I even obtained letters from them to their associates in Damascus. And I went to Damascus to bring these people of the way to prison. To be punished. Y'all yep. can stand me about another five more minutes. But then Paul says, let me tell you some real truth. He said, as I was entering into Damascus, it was about noon. <laughs> and suddenly, a bright light from heaven flashed around me. He said, I fell to the ground and I heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? I asked, who are you, Lord? And the voice said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Then I said, what will you have me to do? And Jesus said to me, go into the city of Damascus. Go to a street called Straight. And you will be told, uh -huh. am I in the book, yes, sir, in the what book. to do. Uh -huh. This is not fake news yes, sir. or lies. Yes, sir. This is the truth. Yes, sir. Well, I've kept you long enough. But as I go to my seat, I want to tell you about another man who had some fake news and lies spread about him on a hill called Calvary. Jesus the Christ died. The fallen man could be reconciled back to God the Father. But before Jesus went to Calvary's cross, yes, he told his disciples yes, that on the third day yes, after his death yes, that he would rise yes, again. Yes, 
So God the Father, after Jesus died and was buried in the tomb, the Bible said God the Father sent an angel down from heaven and rolled the stone away from the place that they laid Jesus' body. Now you're good Bible readers. So you remember that guards were placed at the tomb to keep Jesus' body secure. Am I right about it? But when God sent the angel to the tomb, the Bible says that the guards fell as dead men. They didn't die, but they passed out because of fear. And when they recovered, they discovered that Jesus' body was gone. So they went and reported to the high priest yes, and the council yes, that Jesus was missing. Uh -huh. Well, y'all know what the Bible says. Uh -huh. They told the soldiers to lie yes, and spread fake news yes, that while they were sleeping, yes, Jesus' disciples came and stole his body. Lean over and tell your neighbor fake news and lies. But I'm so glad that I know the truth. And let me declare to you today that I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men may say. How, Pastor, do you know this? I see his hand of mercy and I hear his voice of cheer and every time I call him, he's always near. I stop by to declare that he lives. I said he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. How do you know? Because he walks with me and he talks with me. Is there anybody here who knows this Sunday that he lives? <laughs> I don't care what scientists say. I don't care what they're teaching to our students in high school and elementary school and middle school. I know the truth. And I refuse to believe their fake news and their lies. Come on, stand to your feet.